Hello and welcome to today's mentor session in Accelerator's organization. My name is Gabs, and since I am one of the new mentors in the group, I thought I would share a few words about myself before we get started with today's mentor session. So, uh, I'm actually from Hungary. I'm one of the mentors who's not from the US. So, you know, some of our international members might find, you know, my experience useful. But our business is called Rubicon. We are the leading publisher of historical content here in Hungary. Uh, we're currently doing about $2 million a year in revenue. And fun fact, we are actually a family business. So we were founded by my mom and dad in uh, 1989. We are 33 years old. I'm the second generation in the family. And uh, basically my role within the company is our head of marketing. Basically, I'm in charge of all of our direct-to-consumer sales. I have a lot of experience running a Shopify store, building funnels, online marketing in general. I've worked a lot with agencies and also I've built out um, a lot of our own sales processes. So, you know, if you're planning on asking me any questions, this is really my area of expertise, how to generate traffic online, how to convert that traffic into actual sales. And also I know a fair bit about the challenges of running a family business. So, you know, if you're also in one of those shoes where you're trying to bridge the gap between generations and take something that your forebears have created and build it into something even greater than this would also be the mentor session for you. Um, anyway, I hope the audio is good and everyone can hear me all right. Um, with that said, I'll jump right into the questions. <clears throat> so the first question of today comes from Carrington Crawlers. And the question is, how could I make a loyalty program effective for my business? Business description, I own a photography agency focusing on creating unique and creative product imagery for clients to use digitally to increase online sales. I have been unsuccessful over the past year or so to figure out a subscription model that would help bring in more clients and revenue on a retainer or additional monthly income basis. I was wondering if a loyalty program where people can earn points and get rewards to excite them and spark more recurring bookings. I would love to hear your ideas on whether a loyalty program like this would be a good fit for my business or what other options you would look at in order for me to create retainer clients as opposed to one of bookings. So Carrington, here's the thing that <clears throat> I think is fundamentally missing from your question. Uh, I don't really see who your clients are. and this is really where I would get started figuring out what kind of programs would be appropriate and suitable for me to create subscription revenue. And by the way, our business is mainly a subscription based business. So uh, we have about 8000 subscribers. That's kind of my background on, on this question. But anyway, the, the way I would get started is have you ever done a survey of your existing clients or do you know like you know, their needs in this area. Like, for example, let's assume that your clients are Shopify store owners. I own a Shopify store, so I could be one of your clients. Um, but the thing for me is, since we created our Shopify store and uploaded our initial batch of hundreds of products, we don't upload that many new products every single month. That is to say, like, if I was your client, for example, I would really, and you know, you gave me the best, most amazing loyalty program for, I'll shoot you a hundred images every single month. Like, I don't really need that. I'm uploading like two products a month. And so what I would really encourage you to look at is with your existing client base, because those are going to be your easiest targets to create some initial subscription revenue. You know, just shoot them a survey if you haven't already, like how many new products are you uploading every single month? Like what kind of images do you need? And try to kind of gauge uh, <clears throat> the demand that you have with your existing marketplace um, and really let that inform your decision regarding the subscription program that you're trying to create. Because it could be the case that, you know, your efforts have gone unsuccessful because you know, maybe your offer was not really a tight fit to the actual needs of your clients. That that would be my uh, first guess, actually. Um, and really, like, you know, just try and create a subscription offer or kind of tiers for this subscription where, 
you know, basically what you're offering on a monthly basis is is a close fit to what your clients actually need every single month. So like, you know, for me personally, like if someone offered like, hey, I'm gonna, you know, shoot you images for two or three products every single month, like cool, like that's exactly what I need. If, if it's way larger than that, I don't really need that. So it doesn't really fit, you know, what I'm looking for. So uh, I hope this helps. And also the other thing I would look at is, you, you know, with a loyalty program, I'm not sure that could really get business owners excited, like loyalty programs where you get points and all that. Like I've seen most of that in the business to consumer space. I haven't really seen that in B2B, which is kind of what I figure your, um, your area is. Um, but one more thing that I would actually look at is, you know, whatever price you're charging initially, what if you, there was a way to lower that price, assuming that, you know, they commit to X months of continuity. So like, let's say your initial cost of doing the photos for their Shopify store is a thousand dollars, let's just say. And, you know, you could say, hey, I'll actually do it for 300 instead of the 1K, if you commit to a six month, nine month, 12 month, whatever subscription at $200 a month, 150, whatever it like, you know, this is something for you to figure out in terms of what kind of numbers would work for their program. Um, but yeah, like, like one way to entice people into the subscription is actually to offer them a, a better deal on the upfront service. And then, you know, just make sure that the actual subscription is a close fit to their actual needs. Okay, next question is from Robin Turpin. The question is, how would you react to a prospect who says they do not have wall space for more art? Background of the question. As an artist working on location, this is often a response when a client sees and loves my art. With that, I started creating tiny drawings for tiny spaces. Thoughts? How would you overcome that objection? Okay, so if someone gave me this objection, I would definitely ask them, do you know someone who would appreciate this picture as, as a gift? Because remember, your product is actually something that's highly giftable. Even if like, let's say I don't have shelf space to put or wall space to put my paintings, I would actually be very interested in purchasing one for uh, a friend of mine, a family member, you know, someone, it's just a very like highly giftable item. Uh, and this is something that happens in our business as well. So we are a magazine publisher and believe it or not, one of the objections we actually get from uh, customers is like, Hey, like I don't have any more space on, you know, my shelf for, uh, for more magazines, more books, more whatever. And, uh, you know, one of the ways we handle that is like, Hey, we have digital products as well. If, if space is a problem, you know, that, that's something you could look into as well, but also many people buy our product as a gift. So, um, you know, th that's definitely the way I would handle that objection. Just give it to someone as a gift. They have some wall space probably. Next question comes from Carrington Crothers. And the question is, how would you try and sell multiple services to one client? Business description is, I own a photography agency focusing on creating unique and creative product imagery for clients to use digitally to increase online sales. Even though product photography is my core service, I see clients that also need and want content strategy help as well. This could be good for my business to add this fee to my services and deepen the relationship with them. How would you approach selling them strategy sessions as well as the product photography without losing out on the photography revenue? I don't want to lose out on that revenue, but I see the need for strategy. Okay, Carrington, here's something you could do. What if your initial proposal was actually, uh, instead of saying like, hey, I'll, I'll give you a proposal, what if you frame that as, I'll give you a private one-on-one -on -one strategy, strategy session. <laughs> strategy session. Uh, because here's the thing, number one, you can actually charge people for that strategy session. So you see, instead of you basically having to put in the work of creating a proposal, which may or may not get accepted, you could already already charge a fee of like, hey, I'll create your 
strategy strategy for X. This could be you know your online content strategy, your your product imagery strategy, like you know something that is revenue generating, hopefully. Um, and you can actually charge people for that instead of you know basically giving them your time for free and then hoping that they will actually um, sign up for the photography services. The other thing is. <clears throat> You know, the people that are coming in, even if you don't charge a lot, like let's say the strategy session costs a hundred bucks, uh, the people that are coming to you through the strategy session are going to be much warmer leads than, you know, the people that just ask for a proposal because they have already paid you something. They have already given you their credit card info. Like those are some hot buyer leads that you can now start marketing to. And basically, Within this strategy session, you can include whatever you want. Obviously, if you know photography is your core service, I would make that the core part of the presentation. But this now gives you the opportunity of you know connecting as many kind of ancillary or connected services as you want. Uh, you could start with content strategy, but you know as you start to develop this strategy session idea. You can actually start plugging in as many um, related services as you want. You could start offering them Facebook ads. You could start offering them, you know, like creating sales videos. You could start offering them website design, like, like whatever you want that's connected to the needs of that customer. You could start including in these strategy sessions. Uh, <clears throat> and one more thing that I would add is. Obviously, you currently have a core competence, which is going to be your photography skills. Um, one thing you could do if you don't want to take on the responsibility of like learning all these skills or hiring people to, to do all of these additional services within your, your own organization, is you could actually partner up with other agencies, other freelancers, and basically become a kind of affiliate for them or kind of a referral, referral source. Um, so this is something actually, I'm working on an online course currently. And one of the bonuses that people buying that online course are going to be getting is actually a strategy session with a marketing agency that I use. And basically, through the course that people pay for, I'm going to be referring clients to this marketing agency. And you see, you could actually do the same. Like you don't necessarily have to do all of these services within your company. You could simply refer people to uh, service providers that you personally trust, and you could take a commission on on revenue generated by the clients that you refer. So, you know, I would definitely look into this model of paid strategy strategy session and bundling additional services as an affiliate in order to grow without having to take on that many more like, you know, human resources problems that a larger team would entail. Next question comes from Brad Letchworth. The question they asked is, how do you know when the time is right to leave your full time job and go all in on your business? Background of the question. I am currently a full-time firefighter and paramedic for a local municipality and have 13 years of service invested with 12 more for retirement. The climate has changed drastically and although I never dreamed I would even consider leaving the fire service, I find myself struggling to find a reason to stay. My business has been growing slowly over the last several years, but it's still not at the point where I feel comfortable leaving the guaranteed income of my fire job. However, I am totally burned out and ready to leave. It's the fear that's holding me back and the lure of the guaranteed income and benefits that keeps me there. So how do I know when it's the right time or when I should make the leap? Uh, this is a tough one, obviously. Um, I can't really give you a right or a wrong answer on this one. I can only speak from my personal experience. So. Uh, I was in similar shoes actually in my very early 20s when uh, I was actually at my first corporate job. Like I didn't last anywhere near 13 years. Like you are a champion. <laughs> I only lasted one year. But yeah, basically after one year in my first corporate job out of college, um, 
I just hated the whole thing. Like, like I really wanted to. There's a lot of things that I wanted actually, but uh, most importantly, I I was just fed up of the way the whole organization was structured. Like all all the like bullshit assignments I was getting and 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 all that, and I really wanted to branch out and start doing things on my own. And you know, like, like I started looking for a couple of ideas, and literally within like the second or, or third business idea that I thought of, like. I just quit and started doing that. It wasn't the business that we're currently in, which uh, <laughs> I think it says a lot. I actually think I tried five or six different businesses before eventually ending up at Rubicon, which is our family business. Um, but yeah, my, my story is basically I was totally not ready to quit. And uh, I did anyway, and I struggled for about two years to figure out like, hey, how do I actually do this or what kind of business do I even want? So you are actually several steps ahead of where I was because from your question, I'm getting you already have a side hustle. Um, and so you might know what you're going to be focusing on. The other thing that I would look at is you already have accelerators organization here to back you up. Like I only found AO after about two years of trial and error of, you know, after quitting my corporate job and like trying to figure out like, what if I do this? What if I do that? And there were like the pieces of the puzzle started fitting for me once I actually found AO and I started learning from the mentors here. So uh, AO has actually been a big part of my life. And, um, you know, the one thing I would tell you is you have a lot of resources in here that very, very few business owners actually have access to. Um, this obviously is not a full answer to your question. I think some of the other mentors would be uh, more capable of answering this for you. Uh, but, you know, the one tip I would leave you with is, you know, have faith in yourself primarily, but also have faith in AO. I think if you start doubling down on on your side hustle and actually start asking more questions in here in the group in terms of how do you grow sales how do you get more customers how do you do like all of those things that you actually need to have the income to quit your job i think ao has all of the answers so you know it's not a decision that you have to make right now but i would really encourage you to start using the group to figure out how you can get to that level of revenue where you can afford to quit your job. Um, yeah, that, that's uh, my two cents. Next question is from Vesna Dayanovska. Do you tell me how to pronounce your name. I, I'm terrible with this, <laughs> but I'll get it right the next time if you let me know how to pronounce your name. Uh, your question is, I need help knowing what kind of content to post on social media that increases brand awareness and leads. Ah, this is a good one. <clears throat> so, background of the question. I have a new coaching business helping professionals succeed in their careers, personal lives, through transformational conversations and actionable strategies. Example, getting a salary increase, improving executive visibility, dealing with relationship matters or increasing confidence levels, etc. Unlike fitness photos that easily show before and after transformations, my client results are not as visual. Looking for ideas to showcase wins in order to get leads from social while maintaining client privacy. Hmm. So your clients are professionals who currently have okay, salary increase. Okay, so these people are not entrepreneurs, right? They're more in the kind of corporate world. Hmm. Showcase wins. Okay, the, the direction I would go just because of your uh, privacy concerns is definitely, you know, testimonials and, and case studies. Um, one of the things with social media, first of all, is I think many of us get stuck just, you know, wasting so many hours creating content for social media. And actually, even though like I learned this lesson several years ago, like I still fell into this trap very recently, like I really like we are spending so much time posting stuff on Facebook in the hope that maybe something will happen. <clears throat> but the thing is, if you look at social media these days, number one, there's so much noise that, you know, if you're not paying 
big box for ads, it's very unlikely that you're going to be reaching your audience. The second thing is, especially on Facebook and Instagram, organic reach is way down. So let's say, you know, I have a Facebook page which has about 75,000 followers. Our posts without us paying for ads will usually reach about 3,000 of those people. Like, imagine that's like 4%, I think, and that's actually really good. So, you know, most people, they get like a 1% to 2% reach on Facebook these days. So, um, yeah, on, on the one hand, I would really ask you the question of like, you know, what are you hoping to get out of your social media strategy? And, you know, also to kind of explore, is social media really the best way and the most direct way to get those results that you're looking for? Because I think, you know, many people have this misconception with social media, like, yeah, I keep posting and then eventually I'll blow up. Like, it actually, in my experience, it very rarely happens. Like, probably the one platform where it could is TikTok. Um, but if you're looking at the more traditional platforms, then um, I really would not put most of my energy into posting. Like, I would definitely look at user generated content which would be basically like your clients actually sharing things about their experience with you or more about the actual results that you got for them so like if it's you know you're helping someone succeed in their career and they got the promotion they got the salary increase like they could actually write you know a short testimonial about what that has done for their lives and make it you know, kind of future oriented so that your your prospective clients can kind of imagine themselves in those shoes. Um, but yeah, I would definitely look at user generated content, primarily because that actually offloads uh, a lot of the, the time that you would spend in content creation off of your back and actually lets your clients create your content for you. Um, yeah, like I would definitely not be posting on Facebook more than like three times a day, like, you know, with the caveat that, that, you know, maybe your business is different, but for, for most businesses, I would not be doing more posts than that. It's, it's really unnecessary. I would much rather focus on actually building out a sales funnel and using client testimonials throughout that funnel, um, in order to create the kind of trust that um, you know few service providers these days actually have and uh, yeah I'm, I'm just much bigger on advertising actually than i am on content marketing like i think people spend way too much time creating content but that's just my opinion final question is from rosalie a cloak please let me know how to pronounce your name i'm terrible with names so uh, the question you asked is, what strategies have worked for you when engaging and interacting within online Facebook and social media groups in order to attract new clients? Background of the question, I have an accounting firm and we focus on small business owners. This month we joined a few groups on Facebook to introduce the firm to more people. Looking for ideas to attract new clients. Thanks. So uh, one thing I would say right away is I personally have not used Facebook groups in order to generate business. Um, one of the decisions you actually make at the beginning of, you know, the strategy of how you're going to use social media and other methods of online marketing to, to drive traffic is a question of, do you have more money or do you have more time? Um, in my case, I prefer to spend money on ads so I can save time on engaging in Facebook groups and, and, and creating social content. But, you know, you may make a different uh, decision when it comes to this question. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to say this right in the beginning that this piece of advice is not from my personal experience. This is from seeing what um, basically what who I view as successful uh, service providers who I've seen engaging in Facebook groups. These are the things that I've seen them doing. So I cannot speak about their results, uh, but this is what I've seen happening in the marketplace. So um, 
number one, most Facebook groups really don't appreciate, you know, all these uh, posts where, you know, your intention is very clearly to uh, get someone's business. Like, like most Facebook groups will actually kick you out. And the Facebook groups that do tolerate these kind of lead generating and new business development kind of posts, are really not the best Facebook groups to be hanging out in uh, because like there's the engagement is just super low. Like imagine if you're a user of, of Facebook and, and like, like what kind of groups do you spend time in? Is it groups where people are posting, hey, do business with me? Or is it groups where you actually get a lot of value? Like obviously the second one. Um, so, you know, what I would encourage you to look at is when you're posting in these groups, instead of looking at, you know, how can I get someone to come to my website or my funnel or, or wherever, like, how can I actually provide value here? How can I actually, um, you know, kind of build rapport with these people and uh, um, basically serve them without anything, um, expecting anything in return? Like I would, you know, if I joined one of those Facebook groups, the first thing I would do is like go through the posts from the past week or two weeks, look at, you know, if there's any questions that haven't been answered and, you know, start using my expertise to, to answer those questions. And then another thing I would do is, you know, I would have a kind of posting plan, like, hey, using my own expertise, like, let's say you as an accountant, um, you could be posting accounting tips for that specific audience uh, once a week, twice a week, whatever it is. But you know, this is basically what I've seen happening in a lot of Facebook groups and, and the people that I've seen having success with driving traffic from those Facebook groups is they're constantly in there providing value. They're answering people's questions and, you know, they're posting things that are pure value. And now you might be asking like, okay, like I made all these posts, well, how do I actually get people to, um, you know, start doing business with me, this is actually about setting up your Facebook profile right. So if I'm a member of a Facebook group, like let's say I'm here in AO, and uh, I see someone constantly posting high value things in the group that, that are of interest to me and things that have really helped me get results in my business, probably the first thing I would do is check out their Facebook profile. And so Really, if, if you look at Facebook groups as a kind of sales funnel, the group is kind of your lead generation opportunity, but your Facebook page is where you're trying to get people to come, even though you're not telling them in your post, like, hey, check out my Facebook profile. People will check out your Facebook profile if you're constantly in that group delivering value. Um, and so, you know, in your profile, like make sure that the first things that they see above the fold in your description is, you know, the kind of business that you do, uh, a link to your website, like, like that's going to be the place that actually refers them to, um, to your sales funnel or your website. Like one way of putting this would actually be, um, think about Facebook groups kind of like a house party. Like, uh, if you went to somebody else's house party and started promoting your business, like, I don't think a lot of people would actually be interested in doing business with you. But if you actually spend time at that house party to kind of network with people and, and, you know, share stories that were of relevance to them and then actually invited them over to your house, like that's where, you know, you could actually start, you know, pitching them your own business because you have taken them out of their original setting. So really, I, I would not do a lot of sales related activities in Facebook groups. I would just be in there providing value. Um, and seeing whether or not I actually get referrals from those groups. Um, although, you know, as I have pointed out in previous questions, I'm not a huge fan of uh, all this organic kind of, uh, how can I put it? I, I, like, you know, wh when you're creating those posts, like you're kind of hoping that something is gonna happen. Um, I'm a much bigger fan of, you know, using advertising and paid traffic where you can actually measure results. So, um, you know, that's something I would encourage you to look into as well as, you know, is there a way to actually advertise your business as opposed to, you know,
those thinking groups could take a lot of your personal time, which might be better spent actually serving those clients. That's, again, my opinion. But yeah, I'm always hating on organic posts and, and everything. That, that's just my way. <laughs> so anyway, those were all the questions for today. And I hope uh, you guys got some value out of this. This was actually my first mentor session here in the group. So uh, apologies if uh, maybe some of the technicals were wrong or if, uh, I don't know, you hate my Hungarian accent or whatever it is. Uh, I'm going to try and work on all of these because it's a huge honor to be a mentor here in AO. Uh, but anyway, I hope this was of value to you and I will see you guys on the next mentor session. Have an awesome day wherever you are in the world.